Sarkeesian reports two others had to be rescued from that riptide. Jacqueline. Hi, good morning, you guys. This is such a tragic incident. It was supposed to be high school seniors last day of school yesterday, and sadly, one person drowned. Still looking for that 18. Drownings are a pressing issue that are skyrocketing along coastal beaches and other bodies of water. These incidents range with victims of all ages. Most incidents are brought forth through negligence, inhibitors on one's swimming ability, and more often than not from people not being educated on the subject of drowning prevention. This documentary serves to help guide and inform the public of ways they can prevent or actively help save an individual with a conflict in the water. Sergeant Ashley Marino gives informatix of her career with the San Diego Fire Department and ways in which citizens can remain on top of safety protocols. In to lifeguarding, did you really understand the importance of ocean water safety and beach lifeguarding? Not at all. Not not at all. And I grew up here. Like, so that just goes to show, you know, imagine all the people around the world that frequent our beaches that you know, aren't from the beach area, they probably really have no idea that, um, you know, all the things that we do. We make thousands of rescues every single year, which is crazy to think about. And it doesn't mean that all those people were going to die necessarily. When people say, ask me about, oh, you made thousands of rescues, were all those people going to drown? No, not necessarily. I mean, a lot of those, most of those people probably would not have drowned, but like definitely, um, you know, my guess is maybe like, uh, I don't know, 20%, 15%. And that's like hundreds of people that could potentially drown and die from going in the ocean um, and our beaches. And I'm not sure if that's because we have so many people that go in that aren't very good swimmers because they know we're there watching them or just because we just get a lot of people. I'm not entirely sure, but so, yeah, we mean, we really literally saved so many lives. And then I've also been on a number of CPR calls over the years where the people have come back like a hundred percent. And that's huge. There's, I mean, I'm, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a paramedic and I'm not a nurse. So I never thought I'd be bringing people back to life after, yeah. you know, their heart had already stopped, but I've probably been on like seven successful CPRs. So that's pretty encouraging. But that just also goes to show too, just the importance of, you know, having people monitoring the beach, because even if you are an experienced swimmer and you're out there and you have a medical emergency, I mean, the ocean will just kind of do its thing and take its Yeah. Home. I mean, people, I mean, even if it's something as simple as like a fainting, you know, if you faint in the water, you could drown. You know, you can inhale water and you can drown. But yeah, there's all sorts of medical issues that happen. There's fainting, there's strokes, there's oh, seizures. A lot of people have seizures. Stop and look at the water and see if there's any signs posted, first of all, like either water contamination in certain parts of the world, there's sharks. And you should check out those signs too. And just look to see if there's waves, if the water's calm. If there's waves, um, then you should probably talk to the lifeguards, like just find a lifeguard or or only go in, you know, up to like your waist or your knees um, if there's no lifeguards there. But if there's lifeguards, talk and ask them like, hey, do you think I can swim here? If so, where should I swim? Um, are there any rip currents? We have a really um, diverse coastline. So we have like the long sandy beaches where you can walk out for a little ways and still be waist deep. Um, but then you have beaches like Wind and Sea and Marine Street where it's more shore break, powerful pounding surf, even when it's small. And, you know, you take a couple steps and you're already in over your neck. So that's pretty different. And then Imperial Beach, pretty similar to where we work here at Mission Beach, not that different, except the water's always contaminated down there because of the Tijuana River. And then as far as like the coastline to going up north, Northern California, um, 
is the beaches are just more wild with way bigger surf in the winter time. When we get a north swell, we see waves like 10 foot and they see waves 20 feet, double the size. So much more powerful. But if that's stuck in a rip current, first of all, don't panic. I know that's easy to, easier said than done, but try and stay calm and swim parallel to shore. So what that means is instead of swimming straight in against the current, you just kind of let it take you out for a couple minutes because it's not gonna take you that far. It's only gonna take you just outside of this where the waves are breaking, which isn't too far. And then after you get kind of carried out, then you start swimming along the beach and then you can swim in. Or put your hand up for help. That's actually a really good one. Like, especially if you're not a great swimmer, you're gonna exhaust yourself trying to swim. So put your hand up for help. And um, if you're at a beach where there's a lifeguard, most likely the lifeguard will see you with your hand up waving for help or somebody else will see you and alert the lifeguards. There have been a, a couple more drownings than I saw like the decade or two decades prior. And I think that's a combination of we just have more people coming to the beach now and more people um, that are going to areas that uh, we typically don't have lifeguards at until later on in the day. And then the other reason, like both of the drownings happened that we had around Mission Beach happened um, around towers that were a little further from our main tower and there wasn't a lifeguard right there. Um, and they happened off peak season. So before like the summer started. And I think, yeah, more people are going to the beach. The beach is free. So especially during the pandemic when everything was closed and you couldn't go anywhere, um, people were coming to the beach. And I think that the same thing now, you know. Water safety is a key factor when it comes to visiting the beach. Every day, the beach has thousands of people that enjoy the warm ocean waters, but that is not to say there is any risk involved in their visit. Most people that go to the beach often don't even realize the dangers and that are lurking in its waters. It is important to listen to those that, that keep the water safe, like Sergeant Ashley Marino of the San Diego Fire Department. Her range of knowledge and expertise along with others on the water is what keeps our beaches safe. Beaches aren't the only body of water to be cautious around. Water can be dangerous at any level. Beach, lake, river, and even pools can be dangerous. It's important to know what type of incidents can occur in and around the water that you're going into to make sure you're safe at all times. To do that, it's important to know what preventative measures go into keeping that water safe. Skilled Aquatics leader Martina at Lifetime Fitness has great insight on how teaching others water safety can help you stay aware and be active in helping with preventative measures. Along with that, she goes into different roles around the pool that can help keep you safe. Hey, what is your name? My name is Martina and I am the aquatics leader here at Lifetime in um, Arizona. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been in your position and what led you here? In Arizona, I've been the aquatics manager for um, almost a year now, but I've been an aquatics leader for almost five years. Um, been with Lifetime as a career for about 11 years um, and been around water safety for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what made you want to take on this position? How, what kind of, what was the journey of the position that you had? My passion comes from just being on swim team from high school um, and just loving the water so much that I, and loving, I love to teach. I love to work with, with um, tiny humans that I, and all ages and just say, Hey, I love to be able to share my passion with you in, in water safety and getting on this um, amazing workout and water routine um, that you can end up developing really good workouts and being on a swim team for the longevity of your life and be safe around water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have you, over your positions that you've had, experienced any serious incidents? And if you have, have you, like, how did you resolve that incident? 
I would say I haven't necessarily experienced major, major incidents. I would say more so um, little ones here and there. Um, and it would, it would be, it's more common to see heat exhaustion incidents, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, as far as me experiencing major ones, I'm more of the preventative side than I am a reactive leader. I want to coach every single one of my team members to always be ready to react. However, always being ready to react is always being a preventative lifeguard and a preventative um, water safety um, response team. So regardless of the situation, we're always rescue ready. Gotcha. And can you give like an example of what it would be like to be rescue ready? Absolutely. Always making sure as soon as you show up for your shift, you want to make sure that you have all the um, preventative measures that you need. Um, for example, you have your CPR mask on, you have your gloves, you have your whistle, you have everything that you need. Um, and, and working outside, you want to make sure as um, a lifeguard, you have to have your sunglasses, your um, protective um, sunscreen and make sure that you are taking care of yourself as well as hydrating yourself, always having water um, that will have an, an in taking electrolytes during the times that you are working outside, especially in our Arizona heat um, and uh, making sure that as a lifeguard, once you are taken care of um, and you're taking care of yourself, then you are ready to take care of others because if we're not taking care of us, then it's going to hinder our performance and taking care of others. Yeah. Good. Well, and you were saying that you mostly deal with children, mm -hmm. mostly little ones around here. Mm -hmm. Is there any like ways that you implement that in poolside? Like any like preventative measures or where, where the little kids can take care of themselves? Absolutely. So here at Lifetime, we have what we call our 25-10 rule, um, where if a kiddo is unable to swim 25 yards or meters, um, independently, so that's a length of the pool, then they have to have a parent within 10 feet of them. Um, mm -hmm. In order for us to indicate that, a kiddo does have a wristband on to show us that they are safe swimmers. If there is at any point in time that that safe swimmer struggles for any reason, just for the day we take that wristband away or we have them reassess again at a later time just because um, any swimmer can result in a, in a victim in any way, shape, or form. Regardless mm -hmm. of how awesome a swimmer you are, you can get tired. This teenage basketball player, Will Zaki, was just celebrating his graduation from high school, from Crawford High School, until the tragedy of the current riptides from Mission Beach dragged him into the water and his two friends that were never found. Will Zaki was never found and still documented as a missing person. <laughs> This disappearance symbolizes the severity of how we must prevent water danger and push for water safety. This can be achieved basically by not swimming alone, wearing a life vest, and swimming to a safe level where you are knowingly comfortable. Upon entering any beach, lake, or even swimming pool, one must understand the associated risks and proceed with caution. Water safety is simplistic, yet can have tragic repercussions when not followed by or acknowledged. Let's keep our days in the sun safe, using the methods mentioned and the instruction from these professionals to avoid the heartache and devastation that drowning inflicts on individuals and their families.